If we have some perfect square, so we're gonna say we have the square of n, that the things we're taking the square root of are close to. So in this case, we can tell 101 and 99 are both pretty close to the perfect square 100, which is of course 10 squared. But again, we're close, right? We don't have exactly the perfect square. We are some a units away from our perfect square where a is small compared to n squared. So long as that's true, we can always estimate this as n plus that value of a divided divided by two times n. So let's look at this with one of these examples in particular. 101, we are going to rewrite as 10 squared, that's the perfect square part, that's the 100, plus one. One will be our value for a, and it's pretty small compared to 100, so this should be roughly equal to that number we would square to get the perfect square, in this case 10, plus one, the value we were away from that perfect square of 100, divided by two times, again, that number 10, the number we're squaring to get our perfect square. Working this out here gives us 10 plus 1 20th or 10.05, which is indeed very, very close to the square root of 101. For 99, we can adjust it this way. It doesn't even matter that a is positive. a just needs to be small compared to n squared, but whether it's positive or negative makes no difference to us. 99, of course, is the same thing as 10 squared minus 1, and so coming back over here, again, we take the square root of the perfect square square part, that gets us the 10. This time, because a is negative, we've got a negative one over two times, again, that number we squared to get the perfect square. And so here we end up with 10 minus 1 20th, or what would work out to 9.95. So the square root of 99 is pretty close to 9.95. Now, of course, we're just actually subtracting. 10.05 minus 9.95 is 0 0.1, which is a very good approximation for the difference between the square root of 101 and the square root of 99.